Hi, I'm Steve from TechnoWorks, and basically I'm going to take you through the process of installing a ConNav um, card into your security system, your NX or Reliance system. There will be a detailed PDF document which will basically take you through all the different steps that you'll need to do. So as you watch the following video, um, there'll be stuff that may you may miss, but you better go back and use the document to basically get all the steps that you need so you don't miss out on anything. So um, let's get the video started and we're going to take you through the process and show you how to install a ConNav to your Hill security system. Hi, I'm Steve from TechnoWorks and today I want to talk to you about installing a ConNav into your Hills NX or Reliance security system. There's many features the ConNav will give you, like being able to remotely control your system and get push notifications from your system. So let's start off what's going to be needed to do the job. Well, first thing you're going to need to purchase yourself the ConNav card. And if you buy the ConNav card it will also, from us, it'll also come with some cable which you'll need to connect it into the box. You'll need a pair of wire cutters. You'll need a small flat blade screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, you'll also need a key to get into the box. So if you've got a, an NX12, R12, NX16 or R128, they all have a key. If you have an NX4 or an NX8 or an R8 system, you won't need a key. Just a couple of things that, um, to note on the both the NX4 and the R8. If you have a radio card fitted to it, you can't install the ConNav. Um, it can, those two panels can only have one expansion device. But if it's a uh, NX12, R12, NX16 or R128, no, you can have as many modules on there. It's not, a, not an issue at all. All right, so let's get started. So what you'll do is you'll need to locate your control panel. Like I said, you'll need the key to open the control panel to get into the control panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove the battery. So take out your battery out of your control panel while we're working on it and make sure that the power is turned off. So your keypad should be completely like this dead. So power the system down, that's turning the charger off. So how we start is inside the um, kit that you buy, we'll some, have some plastic standoffs of some little self um, tapping screws that are ready to drill into the back of the case. Inside here as well, it will come with a couple of, there's a user manual um, and an installation manual. So there's two manuals in there. Your ConNav card is wrapped in a protective plastic coating. Don't, don't take that out until you're ready to install it, so just leave it in the blue bag until we're ready to do the next bit. So basically what we do is, um, we have our plastic standoffs and the little screws. You can fit it in the box over here, it's pre-drilled. Um, and the ones we're going to go for is the uh, very bottom screw here. Put it in there. And you'll notice on the plastic bracket there's a little locating pin which goes in the larger hole. So we drop that one on, onto the screw that we put in. A little bit too far. Okay, drop a little bit. So this is wherever your control panel is mounted, which is probably most likely in a cupboard or other space. Next thing is mount the top bracket. Okay, once your screws are done up tight and the bracket's in position, then take your ConNav card from the plastic bag, protective plastic bag. You'll notice there's a ribbon cable on here. You can actually discard that. That's used for a, the telephone line connection, which is basically fastly disappearing because of NDN. We're going to use the, the Ethernet port to do all the communication. So you can actually remove that and discard it. Um, the card will simply just slide into the mounting slots like this. And now you're ready to actually wire the unit up. Okay, so we've got our card mounted, so now we're doing our wiring. So basically, the three wires that connect the ConNav connect to the keypad terminals. So locate the keypad terminals on your panel, connect the red wire into the positive, um, the black wire will go into the common or the negative terminal, and then the blue wire will go into data for the keypad. If you've got more than one keypad, then you might have um, a number of wires going on these terminals. <clears throat> so if you've got three keypads, you'd have three already connected to the uh, data. So we've got that wire connected. The other end of this cable will just go simply across to the ConNav, and we connect to the corresponding terminals that are actually on here. So we've got this exactly the same. So we've got the data, which we're connecting our blue wire. We get the black, which we're connecting uh, the common. 
then we have the positive wire, which is the last one there. Just making sure when you put these in, you don't have dangles of wire. You keep them fairly clean. You don't want little pieces of copper wire that are going to short out or cause the unit not to work. All right, so basically we've got our cable connected um, and the next thing we need to decide on is how we're going to connect this to the internet. So there's a couple of different ways. Um, you can connect it by using an ethernet cable which will run to your modem or router wherever that's located and that's possible. Um, if you've got a single story house you can probably run a cable. Um, we can supply a kit up to a 30 metre pre-made uh, ethernet cable to do that. Or we can also supply you with a Wi-Fi dongle. Uh, the Wi-Fi dongle is a little bit different setup, but this, for this part of the video, I'm going to concentrate on doing the Ethernet connection. So basically, we would get our Ethernet cable, we would run it to our router and plug it in. Uh, we then plug it into the um, ConNav card. So the system at this stage is still powered down. We haven't turned any power or anything on yet. So what we're going to do next is um, we're going to turn the power back on, and we're going to just make sure this card comes to life. So do not worry about the battery, just simply turn on the AC power. Your alarm panel should come up. And basically, we'll get a little flashing light. You may be able to see this little flashing light. And if you've got Ethernet connection, you'll get some Ethernet lights on the card as well, if it's connected to your modem correctly. So there's a couple of things that you also need to do. You'll need to have the installer code so we can actually correctly set this card up. If you don't have the installer code, there's another video we've made basically showing you how to reset it. So just look on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to find that video basically how to reset the installer code. We've already done that here so we know what the installer code is so we can set it up. So we've got the ConNav card on here. So what we've done, we've plugged it to the Ethernet and there's just a couple of things we need to make sure we switch on. So going into program mode is quite simple. We go star 8 program code, in this case is 9713 on this panel. And this device is 191, so it's the device 191. So let's type in 191 hash, and we are now connected to this card. Feature 19, um, so you go 19 hash, which takes us to feature 19. Um, when the card's first powered up, you won't actually have five and six won't be turned on. I want you to turn on five and six, so that's simply by pressing the five and the six, we'll turn them on, we'll turn them off, depending on the situation. So in, in feature 19, we want to see one, four, five, six, seven, and eight lights are on. We hit star, star again, we come back out. And if it's picked up an IP address um, from your modem, which this one has when I've plugged it in, um, what we need to do is we need to go and look at feature 21 because we need to go on the computer to actually find it and do some other programming. So we go 21 hash, and we'll notice here seven and eight are lit. This gives the information in binary, so um, basically, 1 equals 1, 2 equals 2, 3 equals 4, 4 equals 8, 5 equals 16, 6 equals 32, 7 is 64, and 8 is 128. So when I, when I add the, the numbers 64 and 128, we get 192. So the first part of my IP address is 192, and then that's 168, and that's 1, and it's been given an IP address of, of 4, which is 8. So my IP address on this card is 192.168.1.8. We'll need that shortly. You'll see what we need that for. So what we do once we've done that, hit the star key. When you come back out, you should have the arm light and the service light flashing. Um, you've checked the programming. If for some reason the um, card didn't pick up the IP address, you may have to look on your modem and put in that IP address. So all right, so what we do now, we press the exit button twice. That'll access us out, access out of the actual program, and um, basically um, we're ready to do a bit on the computer. Okay, so you've installed the card, now it's time to go to the computer. The computer just needs to be connected to the same network that you've plugged the Ethernet cable into. So up in the uh, URL space, clear it out, and we just type in the IP address of the ConNav, which we've checked before, 192.168.1.8. And hit enter. It will take us to the login screen of the ConNav. It's asking for a username. The username is the word installer. All in lowercase. And the password is the program code, which is 9713 in our case. And we go sign in. 
what this will do is it will now connect us to the alarm system. So we're actually connected, we can control the alarm system from this page. So we actually know we're connected, we just try the chime feature. A couple of things we have to set up in here. We have to go into feature setup and we have to just make sure we set the time to um, your time zone. So on this one it's on plus 10 for Sydney time and we've got daylight savings disabled because we're in Queensland. Um, so that's fine, so we've done that, we've made that change, just save it. It'll come back and say program success. Then go to network settings, and then when you get down the page, go to web password. It'll be all zeros when you first log in. Change it to an eight digit number which you can remember. You're gonna need that when we're setting up the app. Once you've put a new eight digit password in, you can hit um, save, we've done that okay. So you can, um, through this page also, you can go in and do things like, if you know all your zone names, you can enter all your zone names, you can give the system a name as well. Um, you can come back and do this anytime, and you can also do this from the app. So like, basically, once we've made those couple of changes, we've set the clock time to the right time zone, and we've done the passcode, um, we can actually um, log out of this, we don't need to be in here anymore, and now we'll go to the app and set up on the app. Okay, so now we've, um, we've been in, we've connected the thing. One other thing you'll need to do is make sure you get the serial number off the back of the card. There's a serial number um, written on the back of the ConNav card. You want to just write it down on a piece of paper so you've got access to that. So then we go into whatever um, device you're using. This is an Apple device, so in the App Store we would go in and look for, so the app we want to find is called UltraSync Plus, um, and basically, um, we can go in and set it up. So there's a couple of things you do when you're setting up. The site name, you can put anything you like, so you can call it home, then the description can be called security system. The serial number is that number off the back of the card. The passcode is that number we created when we went into the web page and put in the number. And by default, um, the user, user space one is the first um, user spot in there and also the PIN number. The PIN number is the PIN number that you normally would use to access the security system. So if your PIN number was 1234, that's the number you would put in there. There's some, um, you can play around with the login for security on your phone, how you actually log into the app. But basically we type that information in, we go back out. What we should be able to do then is, then we should see home security system. We should be able to tap on this. It's looking for face ID. We give it the ID so it'll let you log in. Sometimes it takes the first bit to log into the site. There we go, we're actually logged in. And now from your phone, if we hit the chime button, you'll hear the chime going on and off. We can actually control it. So we're actually connected. So the away button would allow us to turn the system on in the, in the full mode. The stay button uh, arms it in the partial mode and the off button turns it off from whichever mode that you might have had it in. Um, you'll also see down the bottom, there's some icons down the bottom. Um, one being sensors. If you tap on the sensor, um, okay. So it's showing my sensors there. It's showing my front door, my main bedroom. And they're both green, which means they're actually ready. So there's no, no movement in those areas. You can go through and name all the different um, zones to, to match up to your particular premises. You also notice there's a bypass key here. This is handy if you want to bypass a zone. You've gone out, you've left a window open, the blinds blowing and triggering off the detector in the main bedroom. You can just turn off that one zone, so you've got full control of it. Um, there's also a button here for history, where you can get the history of the alarm, um, and there's some other features. One of the features that we're interested in setting up next is the push notifications. So basically what we'll do is we'll go back to sites, and we're gonna set up the push notifications now. So we've actually set it up. We know that we've got a connection. We would tap on the information button and we go down to where it says notification services. And in notification services, um, we'll turn that feature on and it'll create a name based on your phone name. So copy this down. You can't copy and paste, but just write this down exactly how it is. Look out for any full stops or capitals. It is case sensitive. Once you've got that information um, written down on a, on a piece of paper, you can simply go back to the main login. We just log in again. So basically that information we've written is, we wanna go to the more button down the bottom here. It's got a little symbol that says more. And we wanna to go to email. And this is where the push notifications are done. 
This is also where if you want to send you an email when something's happening on the system. So we simply type in that push notification exactly how we found it before. We type it in to say email address one. And what I normally do is you'll see on email address one, these are all the events that it will report and I'll untick test reports. Test reports is something that happens um, periodically on the system. So in the middle of the night, you really don't want your phone going off. So you can choose what features the push notifications will come to. If you want to add a second phone, the push notification would go in email two. If there was a third phone that was getting pushed, you'd also use email three for the third phone. But if you say you're only going to two phones and you've got a spare email address, you can actually just put a normal email address and all the information that would be generated by the Lime system is sent to that. Simple as that. Just make sure when you've actually put the information, you do hit save um, and it comes back and says program success, okay. You know you're all, ready, all good to go. And that's it, the system's all set up, ready to talk to you. You can basically use the app to turn the system on and off. Um, you'll get push notifications. Hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching.